Conquest of Elysium 5 is a quick turn-based fantasy strategy game with a touch of roguelike. The game looks deceptively simple at first glance, but underneath it has a lot of depth and replayability. The goal of the game is to conquer Elysium, which is a mythical land rich in resources and magic, whilst teeming with violent wildlife. You play as your chosen class and you have to defeat all of the players by killing all their commanders or capturing their last citadel. With the aim of making this rough gem of a game more accessible, I've made this short video for new players to quickly learn the basics. Let's go through setup first. When starting a new game, you always have to choose from these parameters. The map sizes are pretty large in my opinion. These are all medium map sizes and have plenty of space for 4 or 5 players, but if you want longer games or more teams, go larger. After selecting the map size, you have to choose your society, which is basically the age or era of Elysium. This affects which resource tiles spawn on the map, with early start ages being more magical and forested, whilst being less populated with humans and their settlements, and later start ages being less magical and having more human settlements. There are also special tiles that only spawn in certain societies, which can be important if you're playing as a particular class. I'm going to select the Dark Ages because I want to play as the Witch, and she benefits from lots of forests and swamps which are widespread in the Dark Ages. But if in doubt, the Agricultural Society is probably the most balanced for any class to play. Finally, tick the bottom options for Enable Score Graph and Battle Reports. These options will allow you to see a quick battle summary when in game, as well as a score graph, so it's always best to have them on. After that, you select how many teams you are playing against. Select your class by clicking here and choosing what you want to play as. All the classes are very unique and are what gives this game a lot of replayability. The info tab is helpful with a little bit of lore about your class at the top and the bottom tells you this class's specific abilities. Difficulty works by giving the AI an income bonus. So count difficulty will mean that the AI gets double resources from tiles. Start off with Jester difficulty and go from there. I also like to play against unique random players but that's down to preference. When the world map loads, you will see your units on your citadel tile, which is your main base. To the top left, you can see all commanders that are on that tile. Each has three action points per turn for moving or performing certain actions. As you hover over tiles, some info is shown at the bottom of the screen, which gives the name of the tile, and also displays things like extra movement cost or resource production. You can also press I to see more detail about a tile. All grey icons are NPC wild creatures. These are always hostile and can attack your armies or base. To know more about something in this game, right clicking on it usually works. So if I right click on the witch, we jump down to the battlefield view and you can see exactly what is on that tile. Here is a quick explanation of the screen which shows the fortifications and army on this tile. Back on the world map, in the top left of the screen you can see what month of the year it is. Each season lasts three turns this is useful to know because the world map changes throughout the seasons, with snow and ice making areas accessible and slowing down movement. To the right of that is our economy and resources, which can be clicked on for more info. These 10 icons represent all of the different planes that exist alongside Elysium. They are entire worlds of their own that interact with Elysium in different ways and can sometimes be accessed. For example, you could dig into the underworld plane called Agartha and claim their vast mineral deposits, but beware of the creatures of the dark that live there. Or you could find a beanstalk and climb into the skies where flying cloud lords live. There are other realms deeper underground and realms that are beyond ancient and sometimes beyond understanding for you to discover and explore. To recruit, click the icon here and you can see what is available in your citadel and their cost. You can only recruit one unit per turn from each citadel you control. Anything in green text is a unit only available for this turn, but you can recruit as many of these as you want per turn. Some commanders can perform magic on the world map called rituals. They usually cost a type of resource and take one action point to perform, unless stated otherwise. Generally, there are three levels for your commanders to unlock, and each level grants access to more powerful rituals. In the early game, you want to expand and conquer tiles that give you resources you need. So for me, playing as the witch, I need gold for recruiting new troops and fungi to perform rituals. I can see to the west of us is a market village that gives three gold per turn, so this is my first objective. To send my army, I first need to select the commander I want, then click on transfer units, or press T. When the battlefield view comes up, just click on who you want to join the commander's army and it selects them, or by pressing A you can make all the units join the commander. So now that I have all my units assigned to my main commander, I will send them to attack the market village. Here is the battle replay. All battles are entirely automated, you have no control at all and this is a good thing. Strategy comes from army composition and not from micromanaging the battles. 
If you right click on the unit it will explain what the stats are. It looks complicated at first glance, but you can just focus on hit points, armour and what weapons they have. Armour works by reducing incoming damage by armour amount, making it quite powerful. This archer has a bow that rolls a d3 for pierce damage. All combat dice rolls use exploding dice, which is an interesting mechanic. The way it works is if you roll the max number of your dice, you throw again and add that number on ad infinitum. However, you deduct one point from each subsequent roll. This acts as a mechanic to enable critical hits, meaning relatively weak units can sometimes deal massive blows if they get lucky. Each unit takes its turn based on the initiative of its attack, with high values going first. Some commanders can cast spells on the battlefield which are listed underneath their normal attacks. They fire in random order and you can only memorise a certain number of them for any given battle, but you can change what you memorise between battles which can be useful. You can see each step of the battle being explained in the combat log to the left. This is useful if you want to understand a certain part of combat in detail. After the battle you can check the summary if you want to see a clear list of unit deaths and kills. Back on the world map you can see I now have more gold income and a trade resource. Trade is accessed through the cart button here and allows you to trade gold for resources or vice versa which can be useful if you're struggling to get a certain resource. A while later I have expanded and have a decent economy from my control tiles. I now want to perform a ritual to summon a creature to help my army. Before I perform it, it's important to know that some rituals have a sacrifice level, which can be increased to improve your chances of controlling what you are about to summon. I got a Hydra, which is great, as it has regeneration, meaning each turn in battle it heals, as well as being pierce and blunt resistant. Finally, magical items can be bought in citadels, looted from enemies that you have defeated or found on the world map. When you buy them, you have to select which unit will receive the item. They usually give certain effects to their wearers, and you can swap them between units by clicking on them. That's about everything I think you need to know to play your first few games. The real fun is in trying all of the classes, as they are all very different. Will you play as the Cobalt King, that produces many weak units for free and try and overwhelm the enemy? Or perhaps the Baron? who gets a bonus to gold and iron income, as well as free conscripts every year. One of my favourites is the Scourge Lord, who can build pillars of power that produce a resource by draining the surrounding area of life and reducing the world to a massive desert. With 26 unique classes to play and 10 planes to explore each game, there are hundreds of hours of gameplay to be had.